millions of dollars lost at the road traffic department, an FNM senator under fire for remarks reportedly made against other party members, and the Prime Minister dismissing the possibility of same-sex marriage in the country. Find out about these stories and others. I'm your host, Nico Scavella, and this is The Tribune's Top 5. Former Chief Justice Sir Michael Barnett this week called for leading PLP figures to apologize for encouraging Bahamians to vote no to the 2002 constitutional referendum questions. Speaking to members of the Rotary Club of East Nassau this week, Sir Michael acknowledged that some Bahamians may be confused by the government's push to vote yes to the amendments when the same figures pushed for a no vote in 2002, arguing at the time that consultation was poor. Sir Michael also noted that he supported similar amendments when they were brought by the former Ingram administration in 2002 and when they were urged by two constitutional commissions since then. The former Chief Justice referred to a quote from PLP Foxhill MP Fred Mitchell in 2002, which Sir Michael suggested essentially advised the public to vote against what one of the government's current proposed amendments seeks to do. Sir Michael said, and I quote, It may well be that some contrite admission that it was a mistake to advise the electorate to vote no 14 years ago would go a long way to persuading a reluctant electorate to vote yes in June. Decisions on matters of public policy should not be made out of prejudice, anger, bitterness, revenge, or spite. They must be made responsibly having regard to the best interests of our country and in particular the generations who succeed us. We cannot abdicate our duty as citizens to responsibly participate in these decisions." End quote. While in opposition, PLP parliamentarians supported the bills for the first constitutional referendum on the floor of the House of Assembly, but later urged the electorate to vote against all six questions on the ballot. Several of the questions on the 2002 ballot sought to end discrimination against women. In July 2012, Prime Minister Perry Christie defended the PLP's position against the failed vote, charging that the party changed its position on the referendum after several religious leaders said they had not been consulted by the previous Ingram administration. Auditor General Terence Bastian has revealed an estimated $47 million in losses from vehicle license revenue resulting from employees and motorists circumventing rules and regulations at the Road Traffic Department. The revelations were revealed in an audit report that was tabled in the House of Assembly on Monday. Covering the period July 1, 2012 to June 30, 2015, it focused on vehicle license revenue, license plate revenue, and payroll processing. At minimum, it is believed that there is an under-recording of vehicle license revenue of $10 million due to management not having control over the licensing inventory. Mr. Bastian also said the department could not attest that correct revenue is being reported at the end of each fiscal year. In probing operations of the department, Mr. Bastian also highlighted several other instances of apparent fraud and collusion involving inspectors, riders, and cashiers as they carried out daily tasks. In response to the audit, road traffic controller Ross Smith said officials are prepared to prosecute those involved to the fullest extent of the law if further investigations uncover activity of a criminal nature. Mr. Smith said while a number of weaknesses were identified, he is in the process of setting the foundation for a corrective plan. Meanwhile, Transport and Aviation Minister Glennis Hannah Martin acknowledged that the department has long been plagued with, and I quote, repeated age-old issues, end quote, and that the Christie administration had previously tried to address the issues plaguing the department with plans for modernization. She said by the end of the Christie administration's previous term, a request for proposal process had reached the final stage, and a firm was selected in principle from eight proposals to implement an automated motor vehicle and driver's license system. However, she said that process was rejected and abandoned by the former Ingram administration, allowing for the deteriorating state of affairs at the department to, and I quote, not only continue, but indeed accelerate at an exponential rate, end quote. That, however, drew criticisms from Democratic National Alliance leader Branville McCartney, who said Mrs. Hannah Martin attempting to blame the FNM for the woes at the road traffic department is a sad excuse, given she has had ministerial oversight of the department for nine out of the last 14 years, and more particularly for the last four years. FNM members were up in arms this week over statements reportedly made by Senator Lanisha Roll and FNM political hopeful Lincoln Bain concerning their alleged dissatisfaction with certain members of the party. The Tribune understands that during the meeting in question, disparaging remarks were made about FNM MP Loretta Butler Turner, in addition to criticism about the state of affairs of the party. Senator Roll also allegedly railroaded the opposition parliamentary team, accusing them of not being concerned with serving Bahamians but only minded to fulfill their personal interests. Senator Roll also reportedly alleged that party leader Dr. Hubert Minnis has intentionally delayed ratifying opposition parliamentarians. That allegation drew the ire of several sources who contacted the Tribune this week, who accused Senator Roll of, and I quote, traipsing around conducting party business as though she is an authoritative figure, end quote. 
However, the main focus of her tirade, sources told the Tribune, was Mrs. Butler Turner, whom Senator Rowe allegedly said is unfit to lead and has not proven herself. She allegedly pointed to Mrs. Butler Turner's tenure during the previous Ingram administration as Minister of State for Social Development, suggesting the Long Island MP was only handed the junior cabinet appointment because the party could not do better. An internal investigation is now reportedly underway within the FNM over the meeting in question, which, according to party insiders, has stirred up another round of controversy and contention within the organization. Meanwhile, several FNM members on Thursday called for Senator Rose's removal from the upper chamber, while stressing that her appointment underscored Dr. Minnis's poor judgment and leadership. Senator Rose resigned from the Senate effective immediately on Friday, stating that she needs to, and I quote, focus on a few personal matters and do not feel that I will be able to devote the time needed to best serve the Bahamian people, end quote. Retired Anglican Archbishop Drexel Gomez this week criticized some religious leaders for using suspicion and fear of same-sex marriage to mislead the public in campaign against the fourth constitutional amendment bill. In a statement, Archbishop Gomez said these church leaders allege, without offering any factual corroboration, that the use of the word sex in Amendment 4 can provide a legal backdoor for the authorization of same-sex marriage in the Bahamas, despite the fact that marriage does not, on any logical reading, form part of the rationale spelt out so clearly in the four amendments. The Archbishop also said he supports all four proposed amendments to the Constitution and strongly urged all Bahamians to vote in favor of them. He also urged Bahamians to end, I quote, study the facts and be guided by your own conscience and not be influenced by any extraneous factors, end quote. He said, and I quote, Indeed, these church leaders are, in my opinion, obliged to present the Bahamian populace with an unequivocal legal path that leads from Amendment 4 to the passage of legislation authorizing same-sex marriages. Suspicions and fears are no substitute for legal evidence to support their claim, end quote. He added, and I quote, Please know that if you vote no, you will be telling the world that you are happy and content to be the recipient of certain constitutional rights while your Bahamian sister is denied these same rights under identical circumstances. Surely your conscience should lead you to recognize that such a position is unfair and unjust." End quote. Last month, the Save Our Bahamas Committee, made up of a group of pastors, launched a Vote No campaign against the fourth bill, which seeks to end discrimination based on sex. The committee has called on the electorate to vote their conscience on Bills 1, 2, and 3, but cautioned the public against being duped by the government's alleged plot to allow for same-sex marriage under the guise of gender equality. Prime Minister Perry Christie recently insisted that same-sex marriage would never happen in the Bahamas during his lifetime. As debate continues to rage about the implications of the government's proposed amendments to the Constitution, Mr. Christie appeared agitated by the continued argument that the fourth constitutional amendment bill could lead to same-sex marriage, telling the Tribune recently that he is almost embarrassed by this line of thinking, and has calls from those campaigning against the referendum to be given public funds considering that the government has funded the Yes Bahamas campaign, Mr. Christie suggests that he is not swayed by their arguments saying this administration has chosen to be on the moral side of the issue. He also called talk of the referendum as a smokescreen to legalize gay marriage through the backdoor nonsense. Mr. Christie said, and I quote, We've made an effort to get the best lawyers from within the Commonwealth to speak to the question of whether a backdoor to same-sex marriage could be open and they've all said no. I'm almost embarrassed by it. One could argue what one might like, but I said to all of the religious leaders present that in my lifetime you will never have same-sex marriages. I don't believe in it and my government doesn't believe in it, so it's nonsense to speak about a backdoor entry to same-sex marriage." End quote. Then in a subsequent interview, Mr. Christie added, and I quote, The legal minds in the Bahamas have given us the nod and told us we are good to go, similarly with legal minds in the US, the UK, and other major places around the world. End quote. Talk about same-sex marriage and rights for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community have come to define the debate about the referendum. Government officials and organizers of the Yes Bahamas campaign have pushed back against this narrative, however, stressing that the upcoming vote is about equal rights for men and women in the Constitution. Want to get in on the discussion? Well, here's how you can. Just log on to our website, www.tribune242.com, like us on Facebook, Tribune News Network, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune242, or send us a tweet at Tribune242.